Uh, and two of the books that made a big impact on me uh, were by Orwell, uh, 1984, and Animal Farm. And, they, and I do talk about them in uh, kind of as a, um, a two, two parts of a similar story. Uh, Animal Farm being the revolution and 1984 being the revolution betrayed. And uh, in particular, I was struck you know, by some of the things Orwell said about, you know, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Well, I could see that growing up where I did on my block on East 87th Street in New York, where we had a perfect example of class warfare, or let's say class divide. On one side of the block, if you can imagine this, were all of these tenements where um, there were the railroad flats. These are all walk-ups, no elevators. And uh, a myriad of languages were spoken, Ukrainian, German. Actually, German was very prevalent at that time. Um, we were the only Armenian family uh, on that block. And so people you know, working as you know, elevator operators, janitors, doing, min uh, my father had a grocery store right you know, downstairs from where we lived. Uh, just you know, that kind of bare income uh, jobs. And across the street was another world. Across the street were brownstones, buildings of a similar height, uh, five stories, that is to say, but full of rich people who lived in the whole building. Uh, they didn't have you know, just one room. They had the whole building. And it was, it was in, very instructive for me when I was going to school um, to see at 8 o'clock in the morning what was happening across the street. All of the, the nannies were coming from Harlem uh, to take care of the white privileged children uh, in those uh, brownstones. And you know, while we were struggling learning English, you know, the kids across the street were learning French. Uh, they were going to Europe on vacation, and you know, we got as far as Central Park which was not too far away, it's a big park uh, in New York, and we thought, wow, this is like, this is the country. You know, this is a, a rural, a rural area. So there, there I think uh, a lot of my political form, uh, foundation was laid, you know, just from my own observation of, of that kind of class divide and who had the power, you know, some, some animals are more, pro are, you know, superior to other animals. Uh, and also, for me, it was, it was very interesting to see how uh, the society, the political society was, uh, was organized uh, in the United States and these, you know, these two major parties uh, that we, I don't want to use a word such as enjoy, uh, I'd rather use the word afflicted, <laughs> because we are afflicted with, uh, you know, the Demopublicans and the Republicrats, you know, there's a slight difference. Uh, I know a lot of people in the U.S. were, you know, overjoyed, particularly English teachers and librarians, to finally have a president of the United States who knew what an adverb was and could use it, uh, knew how to use um, irregular verbs, uh, complete sentences, even complete paragraphs with ideas. It was quite an amazing um, lexical uh, uh, moment to observe. And so I think uh, a lot of the excitement around Obama may have been uh, more lexical than uh, content because the, the fruit has not been born. Uh, what was promised in 2007 and 2008 uh, has, not, uh, has not developed, has not happened, and is not going to happen. Uh, that's not because Barack Obama is some evil character or has been bought out by ExxonMobil. It's because of institutional structures uh, in the United States which demand of the people who are running the government uh, to do certain things and to walk the straight and narrow path and not to deviate from that path. So it's extremely difficult for a, a president to break with the system in a fundamental way unless that system is absolutely in the ICU, is in danger of death, which is what FDR faced in 1933. It looked like capitalism was coming, you know, crashing to the ground, 
uh, and could not be sustained. And he was able, over considerable objections from uh, the establishment, uh, to innovate a, a lot of things which still, again, I'll use the word enjoy, but it's less and less of a right word to use, uh, that US people enjoy, such as unemployment insurance, such as uh, social, secu and social security, uh, and uh, work and safety protections. Uh, unions were made legal in the United States in 1936. You know, this is the beacon of democracy. It was one of the last countries that actually uh, allowed unions to organize legally. Uh, before that, this was the Wagner Act, Wagner being a senator from uh, New York, uh, 